Good afternoon. Today I will talk about high-speed optical memory based on all optical magnetization reversal and particularly about the importance of a high-speed demultiplexing scheme for practical application of such a memory. My name is Vadim Zaitz. I am from IS, Tsukuba, Japan. This work was done in collaboration with Kiev University, Ukraine. To begin with, I would like to mention about three known mechanisms of all optical magnetization reversal. First mechanism is the magnetization switching assisted by external magnetic field. In this case, a light pulse triggers the magnetization switching and the magnetization is reversed along the direction of externally applied magnetic field. This mechanism had been used for data recording in MO disk, which were very popular as data storage about 10 years ago. This is a image of the surface of a MO disk with recorded data. The recording mechanism is based on heating of the recording area above the curie temperature. When the material is cooling down, its magnetization is aligned along the magnetic field. The third mechanism is a photon to spin conversion. In this case, the magnetization is switched up or down accordingly whether the polarization of light is left circular or right circular. For example, the left circular polarized light always switches the magnetization into up direction and the right circular polarized light always switches the magnetization down independently of the initial magnetization direction. A circular polarized light has a momentum, a photon has a spin equal to either plus or minus one. As a photon is absorbed, its spin transforms into the spin of electrons. When the number of photons is sufficient, the circular polarized light turns the spin of ferromagnetic material along its own spin direction. The third mechanism is the toggle switching. In this case, the magnetization is switched into the opposite direction independently of the initial magnetization direction and independently of the polarization of light. The physical mechanism of this type of magnetization reversal is more complex and can occur only in compensated ferromagnet like iron terbium. A compensated ferromagnet has two antiferromagnetically coupled spin lattices. It is important that electron symmetries are different for each spin lattice. An iron electron has a D symmetry and terbium electron has a F symmetry. Because of the different symmetries, each spin lattice has a very different heating rate by light. The iron spin lattice heated up fast and demagnetized. In contrast, the terbium spin lattice is heated only slightly and remains aligned. When cooling, the iron spins are aligned along the intrinsic magnetic field, which, is, which at that moment is along terbium spins. Later, the terbium spins are reversed due to the antiferromagnetic coupling between spin lattices. Even more complex, the mechanism 3 is similar to mechanism 1, but the magnetic field which is aligned the spins is intrinsic instead of external as in case of mechanism 1. Next I will talk about demultiplexing. Any high-speed memory consists of a demultiplexer and memory cell. Data and optical lines are sent in packages of pulses. The task of demultiplexer is switched each pulse into one individual memory cell. Only one pulse should trigger recording in one memory cell. It is critically important that the neither the proceeding nor the following pulse should have any influence on the recording data. Considering the interval between pulses is, is extremely short, it's not a simple task. Therefore, the speed of optical memory is limited by the speed of the multiplexer. The recording speed of each memory cell is enough to be just moderate. At present, high-speed optical memory is made by combining two components. A high-speed photodetector, which converts a train of optical pulses into a train of electrical pulses, and conventional electrical memory like DRAM memory. The speed of photodetector is larger than 100 GHz. The clock frequency for, of advanced DRAM memory can be as fast as 10 GHz. Additionally, the photodetector, electrical demultiplexer, electrical data processor and DRAM memory can be integrated into one very small chip. The parameter, parameters of possible new memory, which would be based on the effect of the all optical magnetization switching, should be at least comparable and 
hopefully better than, the already ex than the, this already existed hybrid high-speed optical memory. Next, I will discuss the feasibility of optical magnetization switching as a recording mechanism in a high-speed optical memory. The mechanism 1 and 3 are based on heating. The heating and the cooling are famously slow processes and therefore they cannot be used in a high-speed optical memory. I would like to repeat it once more, and this is important. Even so, the toggle magnetization switching can be relatively fast. It cannot be used in optical memory because its switching mechanism is based on heating. There is no fast demultiplexing mechanism for the heating and the cooling. In contrast, the mechanism 2 of photon to spin conversion possesses an extremely fast demultiplexing mechanism about which I will talk about in all following slides. The idea behind this demultiplexing principle is simple. A shockily polarized optical pulse excites spin polarized electrons and therefore is recorded into the magnetic memory. In contrast, a linearly polarized optical pulse does not excite spin polarized electrons and therefore has no influence on the magnetic recording. Two types of optical pulses are used for recording high-speed communication, the data pulse and the clock pulse. The clock pulse is used for synchronization. When two pulses are combined, the resulting pulse becomes circularly polarized and therefore can be recorded. One specific data pulse can be selected from a train of data pulses by using a different delay of the clock pulse. For example, at this delay only second pulse are shockily polarized. As a result, only 0 or 1 data encoded in this pulse is recorded into the memory cell. Other data pulses remain linearly polarized and therefore have no influence on the recording. In the case of longer delay of clock pulse, the third data pulse is selected. The polarization of only third data pulse is shockily polarized and therefore is recorded while other data pulses remain linear, linearly polarized and have no influence on the recording. This slide shows a demultiplexing scheme for multi-cell memory. At first memory cell, the clock and data pulses combine so that the, the first data pulse becomes circularly polarized and therefore memorized. There is a delay for the clock pulse so that at second memory cell, the second data pulse becomes circularly polarized and therefore me is memorized. You may wonder why there is a speed limitation for this demultiplexing scheme. It should be infinitely fast, because its operation principle is simple and straightforward. A circularly polarized optical pulse excites a spin. A linearly, polar linearly polarized optical pulse does not excite a spin. The even output is just yes or no, there is nothing between. It is not entirely true, it is experimental fact that Two linear polarized pulses do not excite spin only when the delay between them is long. When the delay between pulses is short, the pulses excite the spin. I would like to repeat that experimental fact once more, because it is important. Two consequent linear polarized pulses, which are not overcrossing at any moment of time, when there is no circular or elliptical light at any moment of time, and therefore, when there is no single photon which carries a spin, still excites the electron spin. This effect is due to the coherent interaction between photo-excited electrons. This animation explains this effect. In fact, each linear polarized pulse excites both spin-up and spin-down electrons in equal amounts. The remaining spin polarization, which is excited by two consequent optical pulses, depends on how those electrons interact with each other, coherently or not, and, as a result, the remaining spin polarization depends on the delay between pulses. When the delay is long, the spin-up and spin-down electrons, which are excited by each pulse, are dissolved within other electrons of the electron gas, and there is no spin transfer. When the delay is short, the spin-up and spin-down electrons which are excited by each pulse interact coherently according to the phase resulting in the spin transform from optical pulses to the electron gas. 
This YouTube video explains all details of this effect. I would like to emphasize that it is an unwanted effect which is slowing down the multiplexing speed of this mechanism. Fortunately, the relaxation time of this effect is extremely short. It is measured to be only 450 femtoseconds in gallium arsenide at temperature of 70 Kelvin. At room temperature it is even shorter. This is experimental setup which was used to verify the demultiplexing principle. Two consequent data pulses are combined with a clock pulse and focus into the small spot on gallium arsenide. The spin polarization of the electron gas in gallium arsenide was checked by the care rotation of the probe pulse. Both the interval between, between data pulses and the delay of of the clock pulse with respect to data pulses were varied. This YouTube video explains all details about this experiment. This is measurement data of spin polarization excited by two data pulses and one clock pulse. This is a maximum of spin polarization when the timing of the clock pulse coincides with one of data pulses. A short interval of 400 femtoseconds between data pulses the spin polarization of each data pulse is not distinguished, and therefore there is no demultiplexing for data pulses. However, at 450 femtosecond, each pulse is clearly distinguished and demultiplexing is ok. At the end of my talk, I would like to mention this YouTube videos, in which each topic of this presentation is explained in more detail. I had no time to explain how to increase the efficiency of the photon to spin conversion, why is the efficiency limited, and how to fabricate a magical material in which the 100% conversion of the spin of photon to the spin of electron could be achieved. If you are interested in this topic, please check this specific video. Thank you.